Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity that we have in you to serve you. At this time, Lord, we ask you to guide us, lead us, let your will be done. We are grateful, Lord, for the opportunity. And Lord, we pray that your spirit will lead us. Let us enter the place that you have designed for us. Let us be where you want us to be. Let us become what you want us to become. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power that will not leave us whilst we serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Right. It is very good to be back home in um, the cathedral right here. Hallelujah. We are really blessed. We thank God for his blessing, his opportunity. We just returned from uh, visiting different countries. Um, we visited Kenya, and then we visited our church in Kenya. They are doing very well. We've got their own building, and um, actually they are now about to start a church in um, Mombasa. So the church in Nairobi is working very well. They have a few hundred people there. Now they are moving to Mombasa and Kimuzu. Or Kizumu, one of them. Kimuzu. Kizumu or Kimuzu. All right. And um, we're just about to begin over there. You remember Mombasa is the place where they bombed. They have a big port there. So we just send in uh, Pastor Daniel and Pastor uh, Big Sammy over there with their wives to begin. And then also uh, they have their own church building, church office block. Very nice, and they are doing very, very well. The church is full already. And then also, we went to Uganda, where the church is also doing very well. They also built their own church. The church is also full, and they built a bookshop. So we inaugurated a vision bookshop in Nairobi. Whilst we were there, we cut a ribbon, opened the shop officially. It was powerful. And then also in Kampala, we opened the vision bookshop. We had a ribbon, scissors. And it was opened for the first time in Kampala. So when you go to Nairobi, you see the same sign that we have here, Vision Bookshop, is the same sign that is over there, and it's very powerful. And then we also went to um, Zambia, Lusaka. Pastor Sawyer is also doing a great work there. All Zambians, Zambian shepherds, all the shepherds want to see me. They came here, following me here, here, here. Oh, it's wonderful. A whole church full of Zambians. And um, church is working. In fact, when I left, uh, Prophet Baden was also coming the following week for a prophetic turning point service over there. So it was very powerful in Lusaka. And then also we went to Dar es Salaam, which is in Tanzania. That was also powerful. The church there is doing well, and they are picking up. And um, Tanzania was the place that looks quite like Ghana more than any other place. And um, from there, we went to where? Ethiopia. Tanzania, we don't have our own building, but in Ethiopia, Uganda, Zambia, we bought a building. But whilst we were there, we signed a contract and everything to buy a building in an industrial area, a warehouse, and uh, it has a nice shop in front for a vision bookshop, full, just glass, so next time you are in Lusaka, tell somebody, next time you are in Lusaka, you make sure that you visit the church, all right? Okay. And then we went to Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, where they also have their own church building. The whole building was full, nice glass building with steel, whatever. It's powerful. In Ethiopia, you know, I think Ethiopia is about uh, one mile above sea level. So there's no oxygen in the town. Do you understand? Or you don't understand what I'm saying? And Kenya and Nairobi is also high. But if, uh, Addis Ababa is higher. So there's no oxygen. So when I was preaching, then I realized that, ah, 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 I was getting breathless. And uh, that is why the People who run long distance, they all come from Kenya and, Nairo and uh, Ethiopia. Uh -huh. Because the lack of the oxygen 
causes erythropoietin to be stimulated. So you produce more of the red blood cells. You understand? So they have more the stimulation of this uh, the blood cell for the oxygen to carry more oxygen. So they have more than we do. That's why they can run for a long time. You see them, they'll be running and say, ah, why is it that it's always these people who are winning? You know? So anybody who is doing into 5,000 meters, you need to go to Addis Ababa for some time and then be training there. In fact, some people actually travel there to train there for some time before when they go, they go for the Olympics and so on, just to stimulate stamina. So we were there, it was cold uh, weather like winter. In fact, one time I was in Kenya, I was batting and the light went off and the hot water became cold water. I said, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it is like winter. You will be surprised. The lions and the tigers, and they are all there happily. In the city of Nairobi, they have lions freely moving. When you pass all this place, are lions and tigers and zebras. So we went in there to see whether we would see any. We didn't see any lions. But I hear that they come in the night. What's that? All right. So Ethiopia, I tell you, it was a powerful place. And uh, who, how many would like to go onto the mission field one of these days? Okay, only four of you. You want to go, isn't it? So make yourself available. Come, become known in the church. One day we will send you, and then you will go. But it's very difficult to be a missionary. When anybody, when you see a missionary. And the person says, I am a missionary. Stand back and salute the person. And shake the person's hand. Those of you who are ashes, when you see somebody says, who are you? Because sometimes when people come, you, you ask them, who are you? What do you want here? You can't see him. He's busy. Be careful. Because you are dealing with heroes. Hallelujah. All right. So today I want to share with you Something from the book of Acts. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Tonight we have impartation service. If you are not a serious Christian, don't come in the evening. Because of the verses I'll be reading in the evening. All right? If you are not serious, don't come in the evening. But if you are serious, you can come. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And when they therefore come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times. Amen. Are you there? Which the Father has put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Now, every time God blesses us as a church, right, or he takes us through something, we always come to a dark crossroad. And at that dark crossroad, you are presented with good things to do. The reason why I call it a dark crossroad is because it is a junction at which you are presented with clever, clever, everybody say clever, clever, clever good ideas about things that can be pursued, all right, by a good person. Good ideas for good people. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes, After God has blessed us, God has blessed you, right? 
you used to smoke. Now you, you had to choose between smoking and not smoking. You say, I won't smoke. God bless you. You stop smoking. You used to chase women. Should you stop or should you continue? I won't chase again. God bless you. You chose. Should you drink alcohol all the time or drink alcohol at all? You used to do, you stop. Okay? So you have changed. Now, God bless you. Should you go to church? Should you not go to church? You go. Now, this is what happened to the disciples. After they had been trained by Jesus for three and a half years, experienced everything from raising of the dead to casting out of devils to preaching to large crowds to multiplying bread to walking on the water to crossing the river or the water on foot eh? to, to, to opening blind eyes as though you are just making a joke, feeding 4,000, uh, casting out devils from a madman, and things which cannot even be recorded. After all that, they came to a place where they now knew what was good and what the Lord could do. And still, they, now all, they were now presented with options of good things to do. One of the good things was, are we now going to be free from the Romans? Are you listening? We have these Roman uh, guards or these Roman oppressors who have pressurizing us and destroying our lives. And shall we now be free from these people? In other words, should we now uh, expect the political redemption? Do you understand? Recently, I shared about Christ as the Messiah. And I, I told you that the Messiah means the king. Actually means like the king or the president. So when we say Christ the king, like Christ the king international school, it actually means Christ the Messiah. Because they, they were expecting a king, right? But Jesus Christ did not come in the way that kings come. If President Kufa was coming here, we would feel that somebody has come. One day I was somewhere the president was coming, not this president, a president. They weeded the area in the, the area around bushes, everything were weeded so that nobody can hide in the bushes. You see the soldiers on walls, different places, all over the place. Several. You see people dancing. Praises, but they are not worshippers. They are all security men. Yeah. One day I was somewhere, the, the president was doing praise and worship. And so he, he got up to dance. And then we saw some people that they, are, they were not dancers at all. They were just, and then you see them also moving. Because you don't have to know that they are not dancing. They are their secret service. They were working. Then at a point we said, let us pray. Closer. Then I turned back to see whether there was any. Oh, there he was. No, I, he doesn't close his eyes. He doesn't pray. <laughs> so that's, that's the feeling that you have when you are with the king. In fact, I understand from my few experiences of meeting presidents going to the castle, I understand why they don't easily give up power. Because it's very nice. There's a feeling that you are God. You feel that you are God. You feel that you are in control. You have absolute power. You know, everything bow. The traffic light, the car, they're just clearing. Then it's like the man is coming. Yeah, man of power and authority. The, the best man of the country just passed. Hey, one day we're going to the castle to see the president. We're going to the convoy. Then the gates open. The gate where they have the gun. Room. First gate open. Second gate open. Third gate open. Inside. Hey. Huh. It was not a small thing. So a president there when he's coming. But Jesus when he came. First of all he was born at uh, Agbado stables. <laughs> That's Mr. Richard. Even they couldn't take him to Kolebu. He couldn't reach Kolebu. He was born at the Agbado stables. Do you know Agbado stables? Yeah. 
When the baby was born, the baby cried, nah. The cows to say, moo. And the goats to say, nah. Recently, the prince of, uh, princess of Japan gave birth. It was even on CNN. Princess Diana, when she was giving birth, it was not a small thing. A prince is being born. A prince is being born. The possible heir, the possible king of England was being born. It was new. Her pregnancy, the hospital, the, the, the royalty. It was a special king is being born. Prince William. Wow. But our savior, the following morning after he was born, the whole of Jerusalem was going around his normal business, totally oblivious to the fact that the greatest event of all time has taken place in the town under their noses. It has no meaning to anyone. It wasn't announced. It cannot be the king. It cannot be the king. So, the point I'm trying to make is that after God blesses you and after you follow the Lord for some time, you come to the place where you start doing good things which are not what God wants you to do. Uh Something nice like making sure political power becomes the right place. Recently, I was talking to the deputy minister of, I don't know whether it's sky or stars, or somewhere. And I asked him, I asked him, will you come to church on Sunday? He said, no, I'll be traveling. I'm going somewhere. And I said, how do you travel on Sunday? He said, I'm doing the same work that you are doing. I'm doing good. I'm helping the people in my constituency. I'm traveling to see them. I'm going to help them. And in a sense, he's doing something good. He's helping. So it looks like what God wants us to do. But today, after God has blessed you, and after God has trained you, after you've been in church for one year or two years, after you've been around for some time, don't just decide for yourself what is good. You see, in the church, we have people. Recently, somebody said, oh, I want to pay my tithes to the orphanage. I want to pay my tithes to the orphanage of the church. Because... In their estimate, the good thing that we are doing is the orphanage. You see, this is how people think. The, the good thing is the orphanage. So, Bishop, we want to pay our tithes to the orphanage. In fact, I have, we have a lot of people who are touched by such things, and they rather want to give their money to such things. Oh, we want to help to look after the poor. Or maybe if I decide to become the next president, I stand for elections in two years' time. All right, how many would vote for me? Are you sure you vote for me? Mm. (laughs) Human beings. (laughs) Now, supposing I stand for president and I say, no, one of the things that we need to do as a nation for integrity, stability, dependability, probity, and what? Accountability. And then I'll have various things to say and explain to you that, look, through Christian leadership, God is going to change Ghana. Our roads will be better. And I'll give you the number of good citizens that have died on the Kumasi Road. That through my leadership, at least dual carriageway will come from Accra to Kumasi. Dual carriageway. How many will vote for me? How many think that it's a good thing if I can lead Ghana to have a dual carriage from Accra to Kumasi and then Accra to Cape Coast. Is it a good thing? Yes. And the standard of education has fallen in our country. Today people pass JSS and SS and they cannot speak English. It is true. If you read some of the essays, then you find out what did they do at A-level or JSS. And you find that they did A-level P, A-level Ewe, and A-level Islamic studies. <laughs> so they cannot speak English, but they are becoming lawyers. They get AAA. 
and they've gone to university, first class, because they did Islamic studies and A-level away and A-level three. And they had A-A-A. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, we want to change because Ghana has an image of education. How many agree with me? Raise your hand. Yes. Another thing that we need, you see, ladies and gentlemen, is that after 10 years ago, when Ghana had no light, light off in Ghana, there was a river called a Bui, uh, uh, White Water. We should have built a, the Bui Dam. But due to the kind of leadership you have, under my Christian leadership, light will never go off in this country again. Light cannot go off in Ghana. Raise your hand how many want this kind of leadership. Light cannot go off in Ghana. Load shedding will be a thing of the past. Because I'm not only going to build the Bui Dam, I'm going to build three other dams. Yes. And the excess water we are going to get will be used for irrigation on Accra Plains and Afram Plains. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Now, another thing that I want to talk about today is edu uh, university education. How can it be that a nation of our size, we have only three major universities, the rest are these church, church universities. We should be able to lay foundation stone for our own university of science, uh, university of in information technology, UIT. On the Accra flames, uh, plains around Amasama, the land over there is for the government. And at least we shall lay foundation and start our new fourth major university. We shall be linking with Legon to form a link between lectures and professors and so on to establish one of the best high-tech universities for the development of our citizens and the young men and ladies of our nation who are looking for jobs and have no jobs. <laughs> you see, there is another thing that I want to address and that is chieftaincy, chieftaincy. My leadership, Christian leader, chieftaincy, energy of the chiefs and chieftaincy will be directed into profitable things for the nation. Under my leadership, I am going to convince Otumfo to establish Otumfo University of Kumasi and connect it to UST. Because if Otumfo is to use his resources, the money that he gets from all the lands, eh? and from Guinness, and from uh, 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 Guinness, and the mines, Ashanti go and use all the royalty, every land in Kumasi, they pay, they go to pay at Menshia Palace, they go and pay something there, every year. So under my leadership, I'm not going to allow chief to be there, you cannot be a chief without development. Ladies and gentlemen, Ashantis are going to experience the kind of development and education they have never experienced before since Ghana was formed as a nation in 1963-1957. Under my leadership, another area that is going to be tackled is land reform. You see, in Ghana, you can buy land four times before you have bought it. When you buy one plus somebody will come and say, it is for me. Another person will say, it is for me. Another person, and by the time you finish, something that should have cost 10 million is costing 40 million. So because of that, under my leadership, a certain radical transformation of the sale of lands and pricing of lands, we are going to reprice all lands, give them a new price, so that it will be the value of all the four of them when they come and buy. So that at least you can buy it. So that you know when you are buying, instead of 10 million, say it's 40 million. And then all these people will be paid. So that now, yes, yes. So that now you can buy land. Is it 20 acres you can buy? And when you buy it, there is no, I'm going to, you see, under my leader, another thing is the military will be used for civilian issues like land. 
When we demarcate here to here, it's a soldier who will sell it. To you. you see that? When you are bought, you know that you are free forever. You see, under my leadership, it's, it's, our, our troops are not just going to be doing peacekeeping. Every day we are feeding them, paying them. They must be involved in the development of the nation. One of the things that we are going to tackle under my leadership is salary structure in Ghana. <laughs> How many are receiving inspiration for the good works that I want to do? Yeah. Salaries are too low and unrealistic. So, we are going to address it. And where are we going to address it from? From the head. Why should we have minister of state any 900,000 cities as a minister of finance or deputy minister? Will he not be a thief? He will be a thief. He will always be a thief. Every day we see that he is going on conference when there's no come. Instead of going, they will keep the money. They will say they've bought the ticket and everything and they've gone, but they didn't go. It is happening in Ghana today. In case you don't know, your taxpayers' money is being used to pay for conferences that people don't attend. They take all the money, per diem for two weeks, hotel, flight, money, everything, and they don't go. Under my leadership, all these things shall be changed. Percentages shall be introduced. <laughs> when you build a road or you give contract to, uh, to come and build hospital for 40 million, at least, under my leadership, the Ministry of Health, you will get at least 1 to 2%. 1% of four, 40 million for the Minister of Health is how much? $400,000. And he's supposed to share it with the people in the Ministry of Health. So, under my leadership, you would like to work at ministries. Yeah. Yeah, because in the Ministry of Health, You've got 400,000 for the Minister of Health, all his secretaries and the deputy, uh, whatever. Everybody will get some. Then they'll build hotel, like uh, other people have built hotels. In, instead of taking it away. Listen. Oh. Now, the last thing under my leadership, which is going to really help Ghana, is there's going to be a development of soccer. Yeah. Because the millionaires, of Ghanaian millionaires, are mostly soccer players. So if we can have more Ghanaian soccer stars to go out of Ghana, so we are going to build more stadiums in Ghana and develop the soccer, the league, and support them. We are going to pay them salary, government salary to pay soccer players. Because when they go and they come like Tony Eboa, he has built a hotel. Nobody asks him, where do you get the money? Nobody is arresting him. Because we know how many million dollars they, they paid. They are all millionaires. All the 22 players are 22 millionaires. So under my leadership, Soccer, I will forget about 100 meters, 400 meters, and only soccer. We are going to play soccer. There will be no hockey and basketball, just soccer. Because that is where the money is. As our players go and they take us to more World Cups, Ghanaians will become richer. Because all these people, they have relatives. Abedi Pele, they have all come at Michael Asian. We saw them at the airport last time. They were all here. They are all bringing the money back to Ghana. Building hotels. How many think that Ghana will be a better country under my leadership? And because you voted for me from Kolegono, I will build all the roads in Kolegono and make the place now. <laughs> now, you see, this is what happens. And how many realize that I can make a case? Yeah, when I start going on television and start talking about it, and these are good things. They help the nation. They bring wealth, prosperity, development. Under my leadership, 
Anybody who has been a president before will be honored until he dies. Any, no matter what, we shall no more execute presidents. And they will have very big houses with a lot of money for life. Millions. Because they were president and they handed over. If they hadn't handed over, Mobutu, he didn't hand over for the last 10, 15 years. They didn't pay salaries in Zaire. Can you imagine 10 years? Nobody was paid in the country. Soldiers were not paid. Civilians, doctors, nobody was paid for 10, 15 years before he went away. The embassies, I spoke to somebody who worked, as I said, at the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo embassy, they used to beg the other embassies for money. They were beggars. Because Mobutu, he would not go only by revolution. So when a president has gone out in this country, we shall honor him. We will make him officially wealthy with millions of dollars and all those who have relinquished power so that the country can go. So you will be rewarded for going. How many think that Ghana will be a safer, better? Gosh, I can even not preach now because of the good works that I have said. You see, when you start to talk about good things, it takes over. It takes over. And then you realize that you are doing something good. You become possessed. But Jesus said, no. No. Don't go there. It's not for you. It's not for you. You shall receive power. I'm going to give you a different kind of power and a different kind of work. Leave your university that you wanted to build. Leave that idea you had for the president. Leave the idea for the Otunfo University. Leave the roads that you said, the dual carriageway that you said you do. Forget about those things. You shall receive power to do what? You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria. You are going to tell people what you saw about the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's what the power is for. And I'll back you. I'll give you power for that. I'll not give you power for politics. You see, and when you have been a leader of people, you can see. Like all the things I said, you realize I'm saying them naturally. I'm not, I'm not, it's flowing. The, 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 the things that I would like to do when I see them, they are natural things that occur to me all the time. You know? Yeah. I don't need a speech for this. If I was a prayer, I would talk just like Rollins. I don't use speeches to come and read things. I talk from my heart, what I think. You know, like I've been speaking here for about 20 minutes about things that I would like to do and things that would be helpful and I can explain to you for a long time. But Jesus said, no. No, don't try. Don't, don't meddle. That's not for you. I won't give you power for that. There's no power for that. There's power for something else. You shall be my witness. What does it mean to be my witness? You will be Someone who says what he has seen. What have you seen? You saw the cross. You saw the Savior. You saw the Son of God. You saw the blood. The blood of Jesus that was shed. For the whole wide world. And that's what I want to say to you today. Let us know why God anointed us. Why God brought us here. Why he made the church. He didn't bring us here to build roads. And all of us. Pastors, let us know there are many good things we can do with our time, our money. And let me tell you, a pastor who wants to be a president, there are plenty of examples. And if you are, if for instance, I came to announce truly that I want to be the president, many people will still stay in the church. Because if I'm to become the president and you deserted me before I became the president, if I become the president, you see, the kind of contracts and the kind of things that you could have, but when I see these are my people that supported me to become president, I just called and said, look, Grace, you become the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, you, Elaine, you will be the Minister of, uh, Deputy Minister for, um, uh, 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 what, Social Welfare. Uh, Pastor Eddie, look, I'll give you Minister of Finance, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he himself has chosen the Ministry of Finance. <laughs> I'll make Reverend Saki the Attorney General. 
<laughs> so you will be surprised that you won't leave the church. You will be here because should in case I become the president, Charlie, you are close. You have already been the church. They will come and say, Bishop, this is one of your shepherds. Eh? Did you vote for me? He said, yeah. And I'll say, there are some people in the church who didn't vote for me. I think you are one of those guys. You were criticizing my move. Wow. Can you see how there are so many good things for us to do? But what should your pastor do? What should the church do? What should we use the church money for? We must preach. We must preach the gospel. We must go. We must go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria. We must go far. And you see, because our vision is so limited, we don't see Samaria. We don't see Judea. We don't see the uttermost. We don't think it's necessary. Why should you go to Tanzania? What is in Tanzania? I called somebody from London. I said, I'm sending you to Democratic Republic of Congo. He said, yes, Bishop. I said, find somebody to assist you. I'm sending you to Democratic Republic of Congo. Because there are 70 million people in that country. When I went to Ethiopia, I saw there are 75 million people in Ethiopia. Cut off from the rest of the world. It's the second largest country in Africa after Nigeria. It's Ethiopia. But you don't know anything about it. And when you go there, they have famine every 10 years. And when the famine comes, it kills about 10 million people. 10 million people die in Ethiopia. Every 10 years, they have a famine who wipes them out. And the president made a remark to the fact that it's a way of controlling the population. With different, different languages. And there are people there, but nobody knows. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to. Because once we are in Jerusalem, we are okay in Jerusalem. And that is when we start to do all these other good deeds. Because we've forgotten about the thing was not just Jerusalem. It was Jerusalem. It was Judea. It was Samaria. It was the uttermost parts of the earth. And God being our helper, if you are part of this church, that's where we are going. That's why we are setting up our healing Jesus crusade on the other side of Africa. Pastor Robert is in India. He was in India a few days ago. Then he went to the Philippines. Then he went to uh, Malaysia. And then he, he's in different towns. He called me from, he said, I'm in Hong Kong. He's going to church in Hong Kong. Now then he's going to other places in Philippines. They said, I'm in Hyderabad. I'm in Mum, Mum, Mumbai. What is that? Is it Mumbai. Bombay, and then from Bombay, he's going to Calcutta, and he's sharing books, and he's doing the work, he's ministering the uttermost parts of the earth. From Kolegono. From, that's the ministry. We know there are problems. We know Otufo could build a university. We know we could have dual carriageway. We know poverty could be reduced. We know Ghana could be better. We know people could be more better off. But that Jesus said, no. Do what I say. I will help you to do what I say. So you, if you are in this church, understand God. This is God's way. You are not wiser than God. I am not wiser than He knows why things are happening, why they are the way they are. I see you can't be in the church and say, as for me, I want to support the orphanage. Or as for me, I want to give my tithes to this. Or let me pay this rather so that the pastor don't use it for that. If you are here, let your heart fully be with what we are doing. Help us to send missionaries. Give your houses, give your land, write your will and put the church in it. Help the ministry to move on. Give your life and give support what Jesus says he will. You see, that, that verse, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation, teaching them and baptiz baptizing them. And he said, lo, I am with you. It means I will back you. If you send someone and say, go here. He said, eh. He said, look, I'll be, I'll be there. I'll be, you, you just, eh, will you come? Will you be there? It means, will you back me? Will you support? So I'll, I'll be there. You just go. I say, I'll come. I'll be there. I'll be around fully. Fully. When you open your eyes, I say, I'm there. That is why sometimes when people are going through surgery, sometimes when they're having babies, different things, you just want even to be there because when you are, your presence is there, they, they feel that everything. So even though you cannot do anything, they feel that. That's why part of a pastor's work, even especially abroad, where you can see them in hospital, before the surgery, the pastor is always there. 
Because your presence there brings a certain mind that it is well. When I saw you, I, I, I became very calm. I remember when my father died. Bishop Duncan Williams came to the house. He's the only pastor who came. So many of the things in my life, he's the only one who came. He came, he was there by the coffin. He prayed. He prayed over the coffin. And he spoke certain words. And, you know, his presence, you know, whether he did anything or not, he, his presence there, he, he does something. I'll be there. I'll be there. That's what Jesus promises you. I don't know who you are. You want God to be with you. You want God to help you. You want God to bless you. You want God to stand there. You want God to be around when you are going through darkness. He says, I'll be there. He says, Lord, I'll be with you. I'll be with you when you are going. Go, go. I'll be there. I'll help you. I'll back you. I remember some years ago, I went to Colombia. A, a rich man. He used to carry a gun, a silver gun. You know, when you say someone has a gold-plated gun or a silver, I saw it. When I sat in his car, he put his silver-plated gun by the gears. He took me to his house, one of the richest houses in Colombia. And when he came for the crusade, one of the nights, there were five nights, as I was preaching, and the sick people were coming, cripples were coming out of wheelchairs, blind eyes were being opened all over. The soldiers were there. I was being guarded by soldiers. And this rich man was standing. He stood. When, when, at a point of the crusade, I turned around and I saw him standing there. And he was just looking. Afterwards, you know what he told me? He said, Pastor, if you come and start a church in this town, I will back you. That's what he said. He said, I will back you. What does it mean? It means I will support you. See, he's a man of money. He said, I will support you. Because from what I have seen, I will back you. And that's what God is saying to you today. He said, my friend, you know what? If you do what I say, and you forget about all these other good deeds that you are thinking are good things to be done, and you do what I tell you to do, I'll back you. Hear the voice of God today. God says, I'll bless you. I'll back you. I'll support you. I'll help you. I'll back you. Wow. How many want God to back you? I always, I always remember those words because when my interpreter told me what, he's, what he was saying, he said, he says, if you come to start a church here, he says, I'll back you. I always remember that. Because immediately when he said, I'll back you, I could see building, money, cars, anything. I'll back you. I'll be with you. I'll be on your side. When there's a fight, I'll join your side. If there's a referee, I'll stand on one side. If there's a game, I'll be on your side. When there's clapping, I'll clap for you. I won't clap for the other one. That means I'll back you. I'll shout, I'll shout when it's your turn. I'll shout when you score. When the other guys score, I won't shout. I'll jump for you. I'll wear your colors. I will wear your colors. I'll wear the colors of your country. I'll wear the colors of your church. God will tell his angels, wear the lighthouse colors. I'm backing lighthouse now in heaven. I'm backing them. I'm supporting them. Wow. I'm backing them. He said, I'll back you. Lo, I will be with you. It's the same thing. I'll be with you. I'll, I'll be on your side. I'll be on your side. Sometimes I look at our church. Sometimes when I preach these kind of messages, I don't have anything to tell you how you are going to be rich. 13 steps to get money, stock exchange, analysis, and all this. I don't share all those things, but you are still around. You are back in the church. Ash, kabos. I see God backing you in the year 2006. Support the work. Fight for God. Fight for Jesus. Let us do what he wants. You can have a child doing so many things. The other day my child was playing basketball. I have no interest in basketball. I said, pass. Pass pre-tech. Pass the science. Pass provoke. Pass gun. Pass French. Pass RME, religious and moral, pass these ones and I'll back you. If you play basketball, I, I'm not stimulated to back you. It's nice. It's nice if you play basketball. It's a good thing. We are not against it. But if you pass science and maths, I'll back you. Yeah. I'll be provoked and I'll say, hey, where's my... You know me and my wife, we are different. My wife says she believes in 
not giving so much money to the children and all that and so on. I believe in that too. But there are certain things that provoke my daddy's pocket. I feel like giving them some money. Daddy's blessings. You see, when your child provokes you, you want to unload. One day my children were talking about mobile phone. Hey, can we have a mobile At the moment I got irritated, I said, listen, mobile phone is nothing. And I went to a door and I pulled a door and I pulled out mobile phones. I said, you see, these are the best phones. Mobile phones, if I want you to have one, it's just like this. I throw it at you. Stop thinking about past pre-tech. Gun. French. Science. Maths. Do that one. Then I'll back you. I'll give you more mobile phones than you can use in your life. When I look back at my father, I realize that my father... Back to me because I, I, I made him happy. You know, the fact that I went to medical school, he was, when he went for my O-level results, you know, he was reading them out. He was so happy. You know, he, he didn't talk much, but you, there are certain things. Somebody who doesn't talk much, you have to look at different things to know whether the person is happy. I could see that he was, he was proud. The word is proud. Yeah. And then when I went to medical school, my son is in medical school. My son. My son is in medical school. My father gave me more money when I was a student than doctors were being paid. And then he bought, when I was in medical school, in the fifth year, I said, Daddy, I want a car. He said, okay. I said, I want a car. He bought me a new car with the rubbers on. You see, the plastic on has never been sat on, never been used. Brand new. He gave us a student here. Mileage zero. No one has driven it. He backed me and he gave me money. When I became a doctor and I was on my own, that's when, and he stopped back. He said, okay, now you are not. I said, hey, that is when I saw that I have been backed all along. And I saw that, hey, the backing of your daddy is not a simple thing. When he takes it away, then you begin to see that, my God. If God takes away his backing from you, you see that. You press your breast and you see that there is something there. Yeah, it's true. It's, you touch it and you see that there's something there. There's something hard there. If he, if, he take, if he takes his backing, you are gone. You are finished. You are finished. If he takes his backing away, you press the brake, it will go down. It will be there. One day I was driving in my car, something got torn. And I was driving on the highway. Now, highway and the, the road was heavy. The steering wheel couldn't turn. The brake couldn't break. And I was going straight and the road was turning. I'm still here. If God had removed his backing, I wouldn't be here now. The day I was somersaulting in Tamale, if God had removed his backing, my neck would have just, my, my neck would have just touched somewhere and just twisted like this and then snapped through my spinal cord and that would be that. I'll be long forgotten. People will say, yeah, there was this pastor, pastor Doug, um, that some half caste guy, yeah, 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 he died in 98. Uh, he was used to move around and he seemed to like this. You know, he was one day, uh, something happened, and then he was. You see, but we think that, you see, God, you know, there were certain things he used to say and he used to do, and you think God, I'm sure God wasn't so happy with him. And you know how people talk when something bad happens, then they always find something. He said, I'll back you, I'll be on your side. Remember that guy in Colombia? <laughs> he said, I'll back you. God says, I'll back you. I'll bless you. Wow. I feel the backing of God. How many want, how, why will he back you? Because you, you do what he says. What he says, not what you think is good. He says, go, preach the gospel to every nation. I want to go. How many are going to help me to go? Help me to preach. Help us to press on and do his will. Stand up to your feet. It was very difficult for me to switch. 
out of my political speech into the anointing. Because when I was saying all those political things, I was not under the anointing. I mean, I was under the anointing, but it creates a certain atmosphere which is not the anointing. I tell you, it was a difficult journey. So when I decided to move on into the preaching itself, I realized that I was climbing a hill. Because you see, they are totally different. Good works and doing what God says are different. They are very different. In fact, they are opposed. Because you are insulting Jesus Christ for coming to die. You have said that what he did is not important. That's why we, we are giving, we are into making boreholes and whatever. It's an insult to Jesus and his blood and his cross. Lift your hands to the Lord. I, I want to be more like I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be a vessel that you are through. I want to be more like you. Oh, Jesus. I want to be more. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more. I want to be more like Jesus. want to be a vessel you are. your hands to Jesus right now. Call on God. Say, Lord, I want to be like you. I want to do what you say. I want to be like you. Jesus said, I don't do anything except that which pleases my Father. I only please, I always please my Father. He said, I know my Father is with me because I always do the things that please him. I know my Father is on my side. I know God is with me because I always do what pleases him. Oh, my God. Mandolo simele. close for just one more. Everybody standing. If you are here today, you are not born again. You have not given your life to God, your heart. You've not given your heart to Jesus Christ. You want to say, Pastor, please help me and pray with me. I want to know God today. I want you to pray with me so that I will know Jesus and I will be saved today. If you are here like that, wherever you are, just raise up your right hand right now and I'm going to pray with you as we close. God bless you. God bless you. Lift it up high. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see all your hands. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, I want you to come to me. Come to me from the back. Just walk all the way. I want to pray for you right here. Just come. Come, my brother. Come, my sister. I want to pray with you. God wants to change your life today. Come to Jesus this morning. God wants to change your life. God bless you. Come to Jesus this morning. I want to be like Jesus. Come on. I wanna be more like I wanna be more like Jesus. I wanna be more. I wanna be more like Jesus. I wanna be a vessel you are through. I wanna be more like you. 
say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Today, I come to you just as I am. Oh God, I am a sinner. Oh, close your eyes and say, oh God, I am a sinner. Please have mercy on me. Forgive me. Oh Jesus, come to my life. Save my soul. Jesus, please write my name. Say Jesus, please write my name in the book of life. From today, I belong to God and I will serve God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Now listen, I want you, all of you here, it's a very powerful thing that you have done coming forward here. It's one of the most important things you have ever done. And you see, if you look here, you see one of our pastors is waving a hand here. I want you to go with her. She's going to pray. All of you are going to receive a book today. One of my books. And they are going to pray with you. Please, next week you must be here. Amen. Amen. Next week you must be here. And then we'll be moving to Kaneshi. That one too, you must come. Be, this is now your house. This is now your family. What's your name, my brother? Nicholas. Nicholas. God bless you, Nicholas. It's a new day for you. Amen, Nicholas. Amen, amen, amen. All right. So go this way. I want you to follow our lady pastor who is waving her hand. She's a very anointed lady. She's going to pray with you and you come back and join us. Oh, give the Lord a mighty, mighty clap of a ring.